We've got big time Southern Conference action. The College of Charleston take on East Tennessee State University right here in the Mini Dome. I'm Ralph Patterson and Nate Ross is my partner. And Nate, officially this is the Memorial Center. Around here, they call it the Mini Dome. Mini Dome's a great arena. We both coasted it as assistant coaches. East Tennessee State trying to hold the home court undefeated. College of Charleston trying to steal one away from them. Southern Conference action tonight. In fact, it's early in the year, but let's take a look at the standings as they are right now. The northern side of things, Davidson and Appalachian both 2-1 and one, or 2-0. and oh. East Tennessee State 2-1. and one. East Tennessee picked to win the northern division again, Nate. And then you take a look at the southern division. Chattanooga off to a great start. Jeff Lebo has done an amazing job. They're 3-0, Georgia Southern 2-0, and, and of course the College of Charleston 1-1, one and, one, and they have won one on the road and lost at home. Not playing real well. They won tonight. Coach Harry needs this basketball game. They really do, and let's take a look at the College of Charleston and one of their key guys, and that's Wheelis. Troy Wheelis is the key man. Troy Wheelis is their leader. He's their leading scorer. Last week he had five threes in a game at Wofford, resulted in 26 points. He needs to do that. He's the senior. He's the leader. If he plays well, the team feeds off that kind of leadership. Big key, Troy Wheelis, tonight for the College of Charleston. You mentioned key for College of Charleston is Wheelis. Give us some of the other keys, Nate, for victory for the Cougs. For the College of Charleston, inside out is important. We just talked about Troy Wheelis hitting jump shots. It's got to go inside first to Mike Benton and company. Second, transition works if... If the transition game is going, they're really good. If it isn't, they haven't been very effective so far this year. Half-court offense, extremely important. And the key to them and Tom Harrion's team, they got to hit threes to win this basketball game. And East Tennessee State University, again, they are undefeated at home. And one of the main cogs for the Bucks is Zakiwa Wadu. Zakiwa Wadu is the man for them. He's a slasher. He's a 94-foot scorer. He leads him in scoring. He leads him in rebounding. He leads the nation in steals on a team that leads the nation in steals. He might even lead him in, in other categories in the future. He is the guy that makes them go. He's the energy guy. He's the emotion player on the team. If he plays well, they play well. And what does East Tennessee State have to do to hold court tonight? Big keys for East Tennessee tonight. They got to guard somebody. Coach DeCellis isn't happy with their defense. They're scoring a ton of points. They're giving up a ton of points. Various presses must work. They press full court, they press half court, they trap some, that's gotta be effective. If you press and you give up layups, goes back to the first key, you gotta guard somebody. And they've won seven in a row at home. This is number eight, they gotta hold the home court, win as many games as they can at home and try to steal a few on the road. That's how you win the regular season title in Southern Conference. We've set the scene, College of Charleston at East Tennessee State University here at the Mini Dome. When we come back, we'll take a look at the starting lineup. We're at the Memorial Center in Johnson City, Tennessee on the campus of East Tennessee State University. And we've got Southern Conference action right now. The College of Charleston Cougars are at East Tennessee State University. Starting lineup for the Cougs, the forwards, Wording, who's really good, very skilled player, and Benton is the center inside. Mitchell, Wheelis, and Harris, the backcourt. And then for East Tennessee, Fields, Wadud, and then a three-guard lineup, Lawson, Rhoda, and Smith. This is going to be end-to-end -end action tonight. Welcome back to the Mini Dome. Now it's official. 
Nate Ross is my partner. Nate, we can start this game. I'm Ralph Patterson, and I tell you what, Nate, we're going to have end-to-end -end action tonight, and one of the reasons we're going to is Tom Harrion, the head coach of the College of Charleston. He's brought the new up-tempo style to Charleston. Absolutely, he's brought the up-tempo up style, and if we get a chance to watch him during the game, he runs almost as much as his players. He's constantly motivating them, constantly clapping, constantly encouraging them, man. He always talks in practice about you got to have ticker, guys. You got to have a lot of heart. You got to play hard. When they play hard, they're exceptionally good, as they were in the um, great last shootout. This guy wants to stop him from running. Coach Ed Dechellis has to have his team play better defense. Coach of the year last two years in the Southern Conference. Wants to make it three in a row, wants to win tonight, obviously. He's done a great job, like you mentioned, twice named Southern Conference Coach of the Year by the coaches, and they're undefeated at home. There's another look at Tom Harrion. First year as the coach of the Cougs, takes over for John Cress. What an unenviable task, but not for Tom. He really, he's embraced this. He knows that College of Charleston has won at least 21 games the last nine years. It's unbelievable what he's getting ready to take on. Series history, Cougars lead five to one. Last season, Cougars won both of the games. In fact, the last one, Nate, is the game that we did at the Southern Conference Tournament, an overtime thriller. Unbelievable block by Mike Benton on a, on a play that was two points for East Tennessee to win the basketball game. Benton knocked it out of the stands with .8 seconds to go. Cougars knock East Tennessee out of the tournament. Tyrus Ray talked about in the paper today, he wants a little payback action tonight. This should be a great basketball game. It will for sure, and this is a great venue. One of the things that you have to worry about if you're the visiting team is the depth perception, Nate. Here, good crowd, they always get after you, but you're not used to shooting in a dome situation here in the Southern Conference. Not at all. When I coached here years ago when I had a little more hair than I have now, the court used to be on the 50-yard line of the football stadium. Now it's hard to tell from TV, but they've slid it over towards the stands. But they, and they've changed the lighting a little bit to give a little bit of depth perception. But it's almost like playing outside in the schoolyard. There's no wall behind the gym, behind the basket. I mean, there's no walls on the sideline. It's tough to judge distances. And a lot of times a three-pointer from 20, 21 feet goes about 18 and a half feet, doesn't hit anything. They've also got lots of out of control fans here at the Absolutely. mini Absolutely, these guys actually paid to go to college and their parents think they're studying right now, but Monday night, they're right here in the mini dome watching a great Southern Conference basketball game. There's Elvis, Elvis is in the house. <laughs> Maybe that could be our halftime guest right there. Elvis might be entertaining Elvis at, at the mini dome. There's the young man that's gotta have a good game tonight. Troy Willis is the leader of this team for the College of Charleston. He's a senior. He usually starts out very well when he does, his team starts out well. If he doesn't, he's got to do other things, the little intangibles, to make this team a better team because they've got to have better poise than they've had lately. Our officials tonight, and it is a veteran crew here in the Southern Conference. There's a look at William Hume right there, but Mike Wood is the lead official, William Hume and Craig Carmichael. Very early in the Southern Conference season. It's not a must game by any means, but it's a very important game. you got to get a little momentum going. As we said in the open, East Tennessee wants to hold the home court. They've been undefeated. College of Charleston lost one at home. they got to make up for it, try to steal one on the road. Well, and also the end of the first week in March, one team from the north, one team from the south, maybe for the championship. This could be a preview of that. Absolutely. East Tennessee controls the tap, and that is Tim Smith, freshman guard that is just been great for Coach DeChellis and his Buccaneers. And a man by the Cougars, that's usually what they play. And there's the quick deflection by Wording. And here come the College of Charleston. And Nate, normally they don't take too much time off the shot clock. No, they put it up quick. Good shot, Tony just missed it. That was Mitchell with the miss. And we will jump it up again, but it will stay in the possession of the Cougs. I've watched many practices at the College of Charleston. Coach Harry doesn't care if they miss. He cares if they don't take it if they're open. They gotta take shots. He just wants to keep putting it up and go get it. That is Wheelis in the corner. Gets double teamed. Mitchell with the drive and the pitch. And there's no word in. With the three, no good. Good shot though. Went inside first. That's what you gotta have. They've taken two good shots and haven't hit one yet. East Tennessee likes to push the tempo as well. There's the drive for the big fellow. That's Gerald Fields. All 6'7, 270 pounds of him, mate. It took a little gut to step in on Gerald. He's had some shin splint problems. Obviously, he's playing well there, but the big guy can shoot threes. He can also drive to the bucket. Nice fake goes by Benton. Wording steps in a little late. Wording took the brunt of that and got the foul. 
field trying to make a three-point play the Wademan way. Now that's nice if Joe Werning will take that charge, but this time he got hit by 270 pounds. I bet it felt like a lot more. Gotta be there a little quick. There was the three-point way, the old-fashioned way by Fields. Three zip, East Tennessee. There's Wheelis, his first three-point attempt. Long shots, long rebound. Rebound grabbed by the three-point nice Tim Smith, he's done that all year long for Ed to tell us this one doesn't fall. Here's Harris with the penetration. Off to Wheelis for the three. He's got that one. That's the transition game. A.J. will not shoot it much, A.J. Harris, but he'll find open people. He found Troy, and Troy stuck a good start for the senior. East Tennessee trying to answer. We're all tied up with three early. Here's a mini dome in Johnson City, Tennessee. Charleston playing that man-to-man. Tim Smith, really a load to handle on the drive, Nate. Yeah, he's really quick. Tony Mitchell's a very good defender. The uh, other point guard, A.J. Harris, is a little better. I would think Coach Aaron's going to make the switch maybe later on if Tony Mitchell starts getting burned on the penetration by Tim Smith. Ben Rhoda inbounding the ball for East Tennessee. Gets it back off the curl cut. Nice little pass inside. That's Gerald Fields again. Excellent play inside, penetration found the old man. Fields not going far from the basket when somebody drives. Mitchell, pull and pop. No good. And here comes Johnson. Well, here comes East Tennessee in transition. Smith, really tough to cover. Kyle and Charles with the transition team are going to beat down the floor. Well, and everybody talks about College of Charleston's transition, but Ed DeCellis and his Buccaneers, they can play 94 feet also. Tim Smith's going to push it every time he touches it. There's Wording. Very skilled. He can take the ball to the basket. There's the deflection. Harris comes up with it. Back to Wording. Mitchell with the, the fake. And here's Harris. Drive and kick. That's Wheelis to Wording. Offensive possession, they just couldn't finish. Everybody touched it, Joe just missed it. Here's Fields again. You think he's feeling it? Gerald Fields having a heck of a night, three straight baskets. Coach Harry has seen enough. East Tennessee State leads 9-3. They're calling a little 30-second timeout, Nate. And is that just to calm East Tennessee down? Well, I one, one thing calm down. Second, Coach Harry is going to tell his guys, look, when a little guy gets the basketball, Tim Smith, we gotta stop the basketball. He's flying down the floor and hitting easy people. As you can see in transition, Tim Smith gets the ball. He's flying them. No, Tony Mitchell's on his side. He can't stop him that way. He spins, finds Gerald Fields inside. No, that wasn't Gerald Fields, excuse me. That was Ben Rhoda. And there's Fields right down the middle for a little 14-foot jumper. Nobody's contesting the shot. Nobody's staying between their man and the basket. It's the same guy who goes, guys, the same barber as I go to, Dick Vitale, he says. You just gotta stay between your man and the basket. Kyle Charles isn't doing that. It makes him much less aggressive, makes him much more, much less effective. Kyle and Charles are just one of six from the floor so far. East Tennessee State shooting 80%. The man leads the nation and Fields almost got another one. We will see a variety of defenses with both these teams. And here's Benton inside, gets double, pitches it back out. Wheelis wide open for the three. In and out. If you're a college Joss right now, number two, Mike Benton, the only guard hitting the board. And East Tennessee really pushing the tempo, and that's the key Wadu on the fast break. East Tennessee is giving the College of Charleston a little bit of own medicine. As you said, the College of Charleston is the transition team. Watch East Tennessee push this ball after the miss. Wadu right down the middle. Mitchell obviously late. Coach Harry wanted to walk there, but he, Tony Mitchell got in there late for the foul. College of Charleston needs to give them a send. Number one, they're afraid to send more than one person on the boards because he's going to be in transition, but they got to get a couple offensive boards. Zaki Wadu, he is a 66% free throw shooter. He's also the nation's leader in steals, Nate, as you mentioned in the pregame. On a team that leads the nation in steals, that's a deceptive statistic. Sometimes that means you don't play good defense, you go for the steal every time. They're doing both. They're getting steals and they're playing decent defense so far tonight. East Tennessee State leads 11 to 3 early here in the first half. A.J. Harris, the veteran point guard, 
just got fouled. And that was Tim Smith, the freshman. That's quick on quick right there. Harris and Smith both ways. It's funny. Smith plays Harris at one end, at the other end, Mitchell plays Smith. And Mitchell's out of the game now, so it's going to be Harris guard Smith and Smith guard Harris both ways. And here, Collins and Charleston in a half court situation. And Nate, they've scored in transition all year long. This is a big key. Can they score in half court sets? So they got to be a fence. It's got to go inside just like that. That's bent. Finds the going tough inside. He's giving the ball to East Tennessee. You know, it's funny. Up ref, coaches always argue with the rest. When's the last time you saw a referee say, you know, coach, you're right, I'll change it. They never changed the call, no sense yelling at him. In fact, Mike Benton almost got teed up right there yep. by Craig Carmichael. That's something we'll follow tonight. Tim Smith again on the left side. There's Rhoda. Rhoda inside, double pump off glass, and Benton cleans the ball. Four guys around the defensive glass for Maroon George. He's got to go to the offensive glass. There was the block. There's the three by Joe Wording, and he drills it. Wording hit that one because of A.J. Harris corralling the block. Just smart play. Tim Smith tries to get the ball inside. You know, as a coach, you don't mind that call. You mind the lateness of the whistle. It was a foul, but it's a very late whistle. That's what bothers you as a coach. It's a serious action so far tonight. 11 to 6, East Tennessee State leads over the College of Charleston. Here in Southern Conference action, we'll see if the Buccaneers stay hot when we come back. Welcome back to the Mini Dome in Johnson City, Tennessee. East Tennessee State leads 11 to 6. Tune in to CSS tomorrow night for a doubleheader of college basketball. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with the Lady Balls of Tennessee and the DePaul Blue Demons. Then at 9, Chris Thomas and Notre Dame host Rutgers. That's right here on CSS, your source for hoops in the Southeast. Young people getting an education. There was a bunch of them right there. That I think they're art majors and got a deal on the paint. <laughs> ben wrote on the inbound to Tim Smith. Smith can do a little bit of everything. There's a the penetration. Left-handed hook, give me a break. Got to know he's left-handed. Got to stop that. Rhoda with the drive in traffic and draws the foul. I tell you what, the College of Charleston is getting embarrassed off the dribble. They got to know East Tennessee is going to attack the basket. They're just getting beat on the dribble and the rotation to half a step late. That's why each time it's been a block. There's Rhoda down the middle. That time Rudy Rothside just checked in the game. He's there. But he's there, half a step left. you got to get outside the lane, and the referee will call the charge. And that's two opportunities now where Cougars have tried to take the charge with just a half second late. There's the made free throw by Ben Rhoda, 6'4", 195-pound freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Two freshmen in the game to the, in the guard position. Oh, what a rebound. Gets his own rebound back, forces it up. Little double pump action, but here come the Cougars. Two freshmen in the backcourt for East Tennessee. They played very well this year together. That's Wheelis in trouble. Back to A.J. Harris, has to save the ball, and it's backcourt. Now, Mike Wood blew the whistle earlier, and nobody heard it. He blew a whistle first. Nobody heard it. His fellow, fellow official didn't even hear it. He called a hold. Here's the backcourt, but the whistle was blown initially by Mike Wood. You can see his big call by referee half court, but the whistle had blown earlier. It's still called Charleston ball. There's A.J. Harris with the inbound. Trying to get the ball to Mobley, who just checked in. And there's the interception. Swadu to Rhoda and back. Is it the oop? It is. Swadu leads the nation in steals. He got it. He made the smart play. Gave it up early. His freshman teammate gave it right back to him for the layup. And here's a little full court pressure. One on one, man to man. This is a great matchup. Harris against Tim Smith. Tennessee making the college run their offense from about 30 feet away. That's great for East Tennessee, not good for the College of Charleston. That's Mobley with the drive. Tim Smith with the steal. It's Ryan Lawson. He can hit that. Here's Fields. Here's the wide open three-point shot by Ben Rhoda. 
East Tennessee is having their way with the Cougars from down by the coast right now so far. 11 point lead for the Buccaneers. Harris pulls up in traffic, there's another. So, so far the officials don't like the charge, that's three blocks. Absolutely, everyone's a block. That's an unusual play for A.J. Harris. He rarely attacks the basket and goes up like he's gonna shoot. He goes flying by Smith right here. And we'll see a defender come into the lane to help him. Here he comes right down the middle. Fields steps in. Fields was there. Fields moved because A.J. moved in the air. Good call. It's tough for two ex-coaches sitting here and say good call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of us said good call. That's true, but you agreed. I saw you nodding your head. Marcus Johnson in the game now. Got the Johnson and Johnson key for the College of Charleston. Zeke Johnson, number 11. Marcus Johnson, number 42. Both junior college transfers. Both impact players so far for the College of Charleston. 14 and a half steals per game by East Tennessee State. Leads all of Division I basketball in America. Nearly a five second count on the inbound. College of Charleston. A little bit out of rhythm in their half-court stuff. Well, they're having trouble getting the ball in bounds to start with, and when they do, it's way out of position. There's Rudy Ross side in the off glass. Rebounded by Zaki Wadu. With Brad Knuckles into the lineup. Nate, there's the guy that hit the winning tip in against UNC Greensboro on national TV. As a freshman, he made a great play down the stretch. I was talking to assistant coach Tommy Conrad. He told him after the game, son, you just earned your scholarship for four years. Nice play. And we just had a shot of Ed DeCellis. Coach DeCellis has done a great job here at East Tennessee. And now Tom Harrion understands why East Tennessee undefeated at home. This is a good basketball team, Nate. Good basketball team in a very, very tough atmosphere to play in. Wadu picks up his dribble. Knock out of bounds off the, the backside of Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson saw his man. He never saw the basketball. If he'd have turned, he would have thrown it right to him. Field tried to throw it to the corner. Marcus never saw it, it went off his foot. Ben Rhoda inbounds, 10 seconds on the shot clock. It's Ryan Lawson. Gets stripped. Here comes the two. Johnson on the perimeter. The key to a half point offense, obviously, number one is spacing. You gotta keep your spacing, little double dribble. You gotta keep your spacing, and then you gotta move the basketball and move bodies. Kyle Charles has a tendency to get on one side of the floor and get stuck on that side of the floor and not go back and forth. You gotta make the guys in the other shorts play a little D. You gotta change sides of the floor to do that. The College of Charleston loves to create tempo with their offense, but now they're going to have to do it with their defense, Nate. That's why they're pressing now in the out-of-bounds situation. Yeah, down by this many points this early in the game, they got to turn the title and get mowed on the other side of the bench. Field goal percentages, look at that. 60% for the Buccaneers and just 20 for the Cougs. And those two are both threes. 20 seconds on the shot clock. East Tennessee leads by 11. Here comes Zipper play. That's a post-up. Charles Charles and bump and cut to slow everything down. Doing a good job in this Six possession. seconds on the shot clock. Here's Tim Smith, creates his own. The left-handed push, no good. Rebounded by Mobley. Best defense possession of the game for the Cougs so far. Mobley, one of the most talented players in the Southern Conference. There he shows you why. He gets to the paint against anybody, but off balance that time. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. He had a postman and a wingman. He tried to drive between the two. That's not good space. No, no, no. Wadud with the drive, again at 6'5", 220. Wadud could score from anywhere on the floor, Nate. Really a tough matchup for anybody at any level. He's not a great shooter, but he's a great scorer because he's a slasher. There's a difference between a shooter and a scorer. Troy Willis is the shooter on this basketball court tonight for the College of Charleston. Wadud is the slasher. He gets a lot of putbacks. He led the league in rebounding last year. He leads the league in the nation in steals this year. He does all the little things. He gets the garbage points, but they all add up to be leading scorer on his team. New shot clock for East Tennessee. Still with an 11-point lead. Carlson staying in the main event. There's the backdoor cut. And just oh. into the line of James Anthony. Missed the tough one, but there's Brad Knuckles, the 6'9", 245-pound freshman. The ball went up, he knew he went to the weak side. That's what all smart players do. It came right to him and he got it. 19-6 now. Kyle's of Charleston needs a basket. Zeke with the drive. 
Draws the foul. He got bailed out by that time. I think it was knuckles. He drove right into a postman. The wingman on the play drove him. Here's your coach Harry trying to encourage him. his troops. He drove baseline. His wingman forced the baseline, drove him right into the big guy and created the foul. He got lucky. The freshman bailed him out with the foul, Mr. Knuckles. And there's Zeke Johnson. He averages 11 and a half points a game. He's a 68% foul shooter. First one is in. First point of the game for the College of Charleston that wasn't a three-point field goal. But we just last Monday had. night, last Monday, College of Charleston won at Wofford and set a, a school record three-point shots made, 14 against the Terriers. Yeah, a little different atmosphere tonight, a little different defensive team in East Tennessee. They can still make a ton of it. Wadud inside the knuckles, goes up for the hammer, and he is stripped by Zeke Johnson. The College of Charleston double teams all ball screens. Knuckles that time rolled to the bucket. Here it is, we'll see it. They double team the ball screen. There you see Rudy Ross sliding in the top of the picture. Knuckles under the basket, nobody near him. They double team the screen. Knuckles did the smart thing. That's what scouting's all about. He rolled to the bucket. Knuckles get a chance for two right here. First shot, no good. Brad Knuckles again. 6'9 freshman from Council, Virginia. 55% free throw shooter. Into the lineup for East Tennessee is Isaac Potter. 6'6", six, six senior from Richmond. That ball hits the rim, it's a great sound. There's only one better sound than that in the world. That's when a 30-footer goes in the bottom of the cup. A little swish, I love to hear that sound. Knuckles makes the second here at Johnson City, Tennessee. It's all East Tennessee right now. They lead the College of Charleston Cougars 20 to seven. We'll be back more on CSS. Here you see the reason why the College of Charleston is losing by 13 bet points. There's a pass, and nobody guarded the big guy inside. Rudy Ross side, you can see number 32 for the College of Charleston coming down to guard Knuckles after he got it. There's the ball inside, and the, the Rudy's there. The foul's been called, and Rudy's looking around like, who am I supposed to guard? Zeke Johnson went over there to help. Zeke Johnson created the foul, but you've got to know when your man leaves and slips the screen and goes to the basket. Points in the paint tonight so far. College of Charleston, zip. East Tennessee State, 10. And East Tennessee State's on a 9-1 run the last four minutes. East Tennessee's got seven buckets, four assists. That's a very, very good ratio so far. East Tennessee State staying in the man-to-man. -man. We'll see some 1-3-1 -one -one trap a little bit later. They spread out over the entire half court and they do it. It's very effective and it'll be a great switch. Try to catch the college Charleston off guard. Here's Harris on the perimeter. Six seconds on the shot clock. Pull up, jumper, tough shot. Rebounded by East Tennessee. Here comes Tim Smith, fourth in the tempo. Coach, you had to tell us that we don't guard anybody. They're guarding tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Right there, right that was there. Isaac Potter trying to force something up. And I tell you what, Nate Ross, College of Charleston did a much better job getting back on defense that time. Well, I'm sure during the timeout, Mr. Herring over there said, guys, we're getting killed in transition. We're the transition team, and we're getting killed in transition. We've got to get you butt back. That's what they're doing now. Kyle yeah. Charles is shooting just 18% right now. With two field goals, both threes. That's it. Harris over to Benton. Benton with the 16-footer. No good. Rebounded by Jackson. No good. Got two or three cracks at it, Nate. There's the steal by Zeke Johnson and gets a huge bucket for College of Charles. Technical foul on somebody. I think Zeke said something because he didn't get the foul call. But if you go back to the play before that, Stanley Jackson, two offensive rebound that gives you a jolt. We'll see it right here. Zeke steals the ball. Well, he didn't get fouled. I don't know what he said. He said, oh, I know it was taunting. That's exactly what it was. I couldn't hear it, but you can't say anything. He said something to Tyrus Ray, the referee standing right there, not a smart play. That's right, that was Craig Carmichael called the technical foul. And now at the line for East Tennessee, Tyrus Wade, the 6'6", 195 pound sophomore from Tampa. That one's good, 78% shooter. Wade was the Southern Conference Player of the Week in mid-December. Makes both shots there. Ryan Lawson has made 14 out of 15 free throws for the year. He's shooting 93%. Why didn't he send him into the foul line? I mean, he made them both, but he got the best shooter, in the, one of the best in the country. I think he wanted to get Tyrus Wade on track. That's a good point. He hadn't done anything, and that's why he's over there. 
And you and I are right. That's here. exactly right. And also Wade averaging 17 and a half points a game. Here is Charleston's half court pressure. Got the ball in the point guard's hand. That's what you want. Wade gets it across. There's the double team right there. Smith loses it, stolen by Wheelis. And then Tim Smith fouls. And there's a coaching point right there. Gives the ball up and then fouls. You don't want one mistake to lead to another. Game. Exactly. You got the ball in the point guard's hands. They trapped the littlest guy on the court. They didn't foul. They got a turnover. The tide is not turned by any stretch of the imagination, but it's starting to turn a little bit. College of Charleston, a little more aggressive on the offensive glass with Stanley Jackson and then uh, Zeke Johnson's put back. Here they get a turnover. They got to turn it into points, though. Wheelis running the point now for the College of Charleston. They're down a bunch. Just inside 10 minutes here in the first half. I think the reason Wheelis in there is they need points for Wheelis to score. Yeah. Good Stanley Jackson with the miss. This lineup has happened in the past for the College of Charleston, even last year before Coach Herring got there. A.J. Harris is a great point guard and a great defensive player. He is not an offensive threat. Troy Willis can do all those things and in and out is an offensive threat. And at 22 to 9, Mr. Harry needs buckets. Needs well, I know that A.J. Harris is not a, a scoring threat, but I saw with my own eyes a week ago, he was 3 for 3 from the three-point line at Wofford. He has a lot more confidence this year. Here's what dude goes up strong and gets hammered. It looked like they were looking for the trap on the sideline. Joe Worthy was it. He never came. And my dude said, no trap. I'm going to the bucket. He drove inside and got popped. He gets the ball on the wing, and there's Mike Benton out there waiting for the trap. Wording gets there, and Wording hammers him. And really, there was a case where Wording was right there at the place where, do I take the charge or do I lay back? And he just, that little moment of hesitation killed him. Uh, Mr. Fields popping him in the first minute of the game might have changed his mind. And that's three fouls. On wording right there. First foul shot is no good. Zaki Wadud again, 66% foul shooter and the steel leader in America. Zeke Johnson's ready to come in, but Wadud didn't make it, so wording has got to keep playing. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. Wheelis with the dribble drive, pulls up, throws to Benton. Back to Wheelis. Wording trying to make something happen. Here's Stanley Jackson. Great defense by East Tennessee State. I'll tell you what, they had a little prayer meeting before this game about guarding people. They are not getting beat off the dribble, East Tennessee, and they are really frustrating the guys in the maroon shirts. Ryan Lawson running the show for East Tennessee. Turnovers tonight, 5-5 five, five each team, Nate, but right now clearly advantage East Tennessee State here at home. Oh, absolutely. A little zone by the College of Charleston right now. It's a good defense, but you can't play in transition. You got to get set. There's Knuckles with the shot, rebounded by Wadud. There's the long three by Ryan Lawson. And how about that rebound by Zaki Wadud? New shot clock. There's Knuckles inside. Pitch back out. There's the wide open three, and that's James Anthony, the sophomore from Brandon, Florida. Coach Harry just walked out of bed and put up three fingers telling his guys, felt we cannot give three shots to any basketball team. They did, they got burned. 25-9, East Tennessee State all over College of Charleston. Here's the big fella, Benton, and that's blocked by Knuckles. How about that? Great block by the freshman, and Mr. Benton gets a little frustrated. Watch Zakid Wadu get up, ladies and gentlemen. He led the nation in scoring last year. Watch this. He rips it out of... Zeke Johnson's hand saves it. That offensive rebound turned into a three-pointer later on in the possession. Fouls of Charleston ball under their own basket. 21 seconds on the shot clock. They're down 16 right now. Here's Zeke Johnson with the drive. There's Mobley with the three, and what a huge three. Thomas Mobley, they needed that one. Thomas stuck it. And in the game for the College of Charleston, watch Bernard Jackson, number 12. He is a very aggressive, very tough basketball player. There's the ball inside. That's Wadu. No good. Scramble for it. It's going to the College of Charleston. This is exciting. This is beat em up basketball so far. East Tennessee State. 25, College of Charleston 12. East Tennessee State is undefeated at home. They want to keep that going. We'll see if they keep it rolling when we come back. Yeah. 
27, 42 to go in the first half. East Tennessee State 25, College of Charleston 12, Southern Conference basketball. This College of Charleston team is on CSS again next Monday when they host the Furman Paladins. Tip off is at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. There's Ed DeCellis, and Nate Ross, he's got to like what he's seeing so far. Well, he didn't like the way his team played defense last two games. A win over to Citadel last game. Before that, they got beat at Appalachian State. He's got to love the way they're playing D tonight. Man-to-man -to -man all the way and in their face. A.J. Harris back in. Picks up his dribble. Wheelis now against the pressure. 15 seconds on the shot clock there, Zeke Johnson. There goes the ball inside. There's the drive and the scoop shot. No good. That is Bernard Jackson. He got to the rim. He just didn't know where the rim was when he got there and threw it over the top. Roger Charleston on a miss. Playing zone. That's tough. A great steal. And Ryan Lawson loses the ball. Here's Wheelis in transition. No good on the three. Rebound is the key one, dude. Coach Harry likes that shot. That's what he wants him to do. It's a good shot. He just didn't hit it. There's Tyrus Wade from the three. And here comes Wheeler. Blocked on the way up by Tyrus Wade. There's the rebound. Guys flopping all over the floor. Troy Wheeler is down. He's not getting up very quickly. You can see him right there. This is a very physical basketball game. Cody Johnson is starting to become the aggressor. They're just not finishing the play. This one gets smacked before it gets halfway to rim, but Troy really stays with it, gets it, takes it inside, fakes Tyrus up in the air, misses the shot, and then it's a free for all. Grab it, Stanley Jackson tries to grab it, can't. Look at he threw the ball away before he hit the ground, but they called a trap. You go Great action, either way. Big time. I think it was a first down, but I'm not sure. Both teams, lots of shot blocks. East Tennessee with three, and Kyle's at Charleston with one. Each team, in fact, uh, East Tennessee averages over four and a half, Nate, and, and Kyle's at Charleston over three per game. Most of Kyle's at Charleston blocks with Mike Benton, who's now on the bench. Coach Harry not, oh, he just put him back in. Excuse me, Mike's back in the basketball game. Bernard Jackson doesn't play a lot of minutes out of stretch. Bernard Jackson has had six knee surgeries, the latest one exactly two months ago to the day. Very aggressive, very effective, but isn't in game shape and is afraid to go a long amount of minutes in the stretch. AJ Harris running the point. There's Wheelis. They're inside to Mobley. How about that dunk attempt? Oh my. The radio announcers for the College of Charleston, Tony Schiffer, told me at Wofford, he had a dunk that was unbelievable. That one was pretty impressive. Watch how high over the rim he is. And this is a great angle from up, up down below. Watch this. No dribble. Way up there. That's wow. no dribble. That's no step. That's just power. From the baseline again, boom, he got hammered by Knuckles. Knuckles is looking up like, I can't believe he got up that high. He's a great athlete, Thomas Mobley. He sure is. He makes the free throw there. He's a 77% foul shooter from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Nate, I was at the game at Walford, and it was one of the, the best dunks in transition, in traffic I've ever seen. Not only can he do all that, he can hit threes as well as he did earlier in the game. Make a free throw, a little press. Yeah, 25-14, 11-point lead for the Buccaneers against the pressure. There's one dude with the easy one. That's Mike Benton's ball. The back man has one job in a press. Protect the basket. He didn't do that. A.J. Harris trying to get something done in the half-court situation for College of Charleston. There's Wheelis. Once Benton, he's got him. There's the double team. Mike Benton was double team. That meant somebody was open. He shot it over four hands. Ryan Lawson trying to recognize man or zone. Charleston in the zone. There's the pass inside to Wade on that. That's the dead spot in the zone. Any 2-3 zone, 3-2 zone in the middle. That's exactly where Tyrus Wade got it. No one guard him in 12 foot jumper. There's a foul on Mike Benton trying to post up. 
Well, the College of Charleston in the last three possessions has set a double screen on one side, a single screen on the other, on one side, double screen on one, single on the other. And it's run Troy Willis off six screens back and forth. That time Mike Benton moved and they called him for it. But they're trying to free Willis, who is being guarded by Ben Roder, the freshman. They did it a couple times, they didn't do it that time, they got the bad call. Joe Werdink back into the game for College of Charleston. He's got three fouls. Let's see if they go after him. Different press now, no more zone, man to man. Ryan Lawson. Shaki Wadu. Here's Tyrus Wade. East Tennessee runs a lot of cuts from the weak side to try to get the ball in the middle. Wadu in traffic, no good. Scramble for it, goes out of bounds. Six seconds on the shot clock, but ball to the Cougars. Watch the rebound here. The shot's missed, but watch Knuckles. He does things. He won't do this as a sophomore. He brings it down low. Down low, Troy Willis ripped him loose. You've got to keep it up high. He'll learn to do that. He's only a freshman. Little things turn into big points in a college basketball game. College of Charleston down 15 on the road. East Tennessee undefeated in this building this year. You've got to throw it inside. Rudy doesn't have to shoot at Rudy Ross' side, but if he touches it, he creates opportunities for the perimeter players. There's Willis into Mobley. There's the double. Gets away from it. Tough shot, shot in traffic. That's big time right there. That's where the guy dead in his face, and he uses that body ability and just jumps over to the defender and stuck it. The ball's got to go inside. Doesn't have to be shot every time. That time Mobley gives it. It's got to go inside to create opportunities for the players on the outside. There's Wadu goes up strong with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. East Tennessee does a great job of sending people from the weak side up to the top and then back cut or down the lane. That's exactly how Wadu got the ball that time. He came from weak side to elbow and down the lane. Defender chasing, defender foul. You see Eddie DeCello is extremely happy with the performance of his guys tonight. Wadu's first free throw is good. He does a little bit of everything, averaging over 13 points a game. A good three-point shooter. This is where the coaching takes place. You just saw Eddie DeCellis right there. Grabbing Tyrus, telling him what he did wrong, and trying to explain to him how you can do it better. There he is right there. East Tennessee State by 15, 31 to 16 here at the Mini Dome. Your Southern Conference action. We'll be back right after this. Ralph Patterson with Nate Ross here in Johnson City. There's some crazed East Tennessee fans here. Monday night, they called Mom up, said, Mom, I'll be studying, don't bother me. I promise I'll call you when I get studying about, get done about 9, 30, 10, and that's exactly what they'll do. It's what I did. <laughs> Kyle to Charleston down 15. Here's a team that won the Alaskan shootout, beat Wyoming, Oklahoma State, Villanova on successive nights. And there's another steal in the half court. Because the game's on the tube, they're going to get to the next TV timeout. He's cut it to single digits, and they're back in this ball game. That's the goal. It's got to be right now. Cut it to nine, and then we'll win it in the second half. You don't lose a game in the first half, and you definitely don't win one in the first half. Well, we also know the way that College of Charleston plays, and there's a good look at Tom Harrion. They can score in some bunches, but he is not a happy camper right now. No, he's not. His team's not playing well, but that's why you play two halves. They're not going to end it right now, so... He's got to keep inspiring his guys. That's what the cheerleader head coach is all about. That wasn't pretty. And James Anthony is a 77% foul shooter. That didn't look like a 77% foul shot. That looked like a Shaquille O'Neal. better? That one looked a lot better than Shaq. 32-16. More perimeter, off the perimeter oriented basketball team in there for the College of Charleston. Rudy Ross side, the only true post man. AJ Harris trying to break down the Buccaneer defense. Nice spin move right there. Picks his dribble up. Gets fouled in the double team. He got a little upset. He got the call. College of Charleston is very frustrated right now for obvious reasons. It's 32 16 with 2.57 to go in the half. They got to keep their composure. We got this, and obviously a second half to play. He drove inside. They doubled him. Mobley should have got out of the way there. And the foul, of course, by Ryan Lawson just popped him. And that's what you didn't see the rest of that. Yep. 
All right, chance to score points with the clock not running. That's what you got all the little things up that for the College of Charleston to get back in this thing. This is one of them right there. A.J. Harris, veteran point guard, not a big score, just a 38% free throw shooter. This is it. Man to man for the college, they got back in transition that time. Walk in and call it. It's a turnover now, the college has to turn it into points. They're doing the little things, they're not finishing. They're starting to get back in, and they just need to finish and get back in this thing. College of Charleston shooting 20% right now. Down 16. AJ Harris blows past Ryan Lawson. There's Mobley inside, goes up strong. No foul, knocked out of bounds. They'll maintain possession. Tom Harry getting trying to get a combination in there that's going to score some points. Defensively, they've tightened it up. But now they got to score some points in the substitutes liberally to make that happen. Zeke Johnson back into the lineup. Also Stanley Jackson. Wheelis on the inbound. There's Mobley. Rossside tries to get it inside to Stanley Jackson. And there's Rossside just trying to get possession back. Yeah, he, he tried to throw it in Stanley Jackson. Ball got slapped away and then he dove for the basketball, but it just doesn't make sense for the big guy to be throwing it into Stanley Jackson. He's got to throw it back out and let Stanley Jackson set a back screen for him and then post himself up. Somebody's got to grab the other guys by the maroon shirt and say, guys, let's get back in this thing. Somebody's got to be a leader. Troy Wheels is the man. Hasn't done it yet, but we've got a long way to go. We do have a long way to go, and at the foul line is, is Ben Rhoda. 58% foul shooter. But Nate, also, now you get to see why all the coaches and all the media in the Southern Conference thought that East Tennessee State would, would win the North Division. This is a team that won eight, the last eight regular season games last year. And they have a nice mix of inside out, very good defense. Especially in this building, 7-0 this year, 11-0 over the last 11 straight over the last two years. Tough place, and they play very well in this building. Stanley Jackson in the corner, gets out of there. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Wheelis. Inside, there's Mobley. Double pump in traffic, draws the foul. They did a good job that time. They reversed the basketball. They got it inside, and Mobley, being the athlete that he is, makes an aggressive move to the basket. Now he's got to pay off at a couple free throws. That's what they need to do to slow the game down and get it at the foul. And here's Mobley. Nice spin move against Tyrus Wade. Three guys go up there. Take your pick. Wadud, Wade. Anybody found him, now he's got to make these. Well, Mobley, good foul shooter, 77%. The 6'5 junior from Charlotte. But right now, not a whole lot going well for the College of Charlotte. No, but this guy can make it happen. Bernard Jackson comes in, only a minute and a half to play, but he can make something happen. He's strong, he's a huge guy from the waist up, from the shoulders and arms. He will be aggressive if you give him the basketball inside, guaranteed. Colin Charleston keeps fighting. You gotta love it that. He's fighting hard. Brad Knuckles chases the rebound down. And here's Ryan Lawson. It's two senior from Rogersville, Tennessee. Here's that little zipper play you talked about earlier, Nate. There's Wadu, 12 on the shot clock, steps in, off less, no good. There's the rebound by Bernard Jackson. If it's near him, he will get a hand on it. And if your head's in there, he might rip that off too. He's a big, strong kid. It's unfortunate, he hasn't played in over a year because of all the knee surgeries. Two weeks ago, excuse me, two months ago, we said he had that arthroscopic surgery to kind of clean it up. It's amazing he recovers so fast. Young people do that, guys our age don't. 126 to go in the half. There's Tyrus Wade on the inbound. Down it. You know, the difference in the game so far is East Tennessee, I think one of the main differences, East Tennessee's inbounds plays have resulted in scores. College of Charleston's had a tough time getting the ball inbounds under their own basket. That's Tyrus Wade. That's a big time shot right nice here. Nice cut up there, nice little bank shot, uses the glass and gets fouled. Wade averaging 17 and a half points. 
78% foul shooter, misses that one. 35-16, East Tennessee leads. And you mentioned Bernard Jackson I tell you, he makes with things the happen. runner. He makes things happen. Coach Harry might have to go with him a little longer in the second half. He just makes good things happen. He got the rebound down that end. He scored down that end. Just inside one minute to go. And Rhoda fouled by Stanley Jackson off of the curl cut. And there's a play trying to get back the whole bat, 17 points in one possession. He's went for the steal and missed. The guy just played solid defense. Didn't take you one play to lose to be down by 17. It's not going to take you one play to catch up. Here's Coach Harrion. He will have some adjustments. And he's got to push the right buds at halftime and try to get his guys back in. There's Ed DeCellis. Again, he's done a remarkable job here at East Tennessee. This is probably the best East Tennessee State team, at least in 10 or 11 years, since Mr. Jennings was dominating the Southern Conference. Mr. Jennings and Greg Dennis, they were a great combination and did some damage in the NCAA. There's a wide open jumper right there. That's your guy, Nate Bernard Jackson. Bernard has done his thing inside. Coach Cachellas wants to stop it. He wants that last possession to be a good one. And he wants to tell him, guys, a big play right here would be the College of Charleston stop and get a score. And even though it's a large margin, they ended the last two minutes playing exceptionally aggressive and much better than they did in the first 18 minutes. Now, do you think Ed DeCellis will, will call a play so that maybe they get it back, Nate, or you just think he'll hold it for one? Oh, he's going to hold it for one shot, unless they get a, an early one and it presents itself. Here we'll see Bernard Jackson. The ball's kicked out to him. Foul line, 16-footer, boom. He's got a nice touch for a big guy, and he's exceptionally aggressive for his, his problem has just been his health in the last couple years. And 6'6", 230. Look at those arms and shoulders. Almost as big as yours. Almost. Almost. He doesn't have to cut his sleeves. No, no Like problem. you used to. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I cut him off. He wants to play so bad because he's been hurt, you know he wants to get back in this thing. Full court press by the Cougars. They've had trouble at the basket protecting it. They've done a good job in the backcourt. And that's Quentin Hollis guarding the, the ball for College of Charles. Steal here to be real big. There's the pass over the top to Knuckles. Oh, great place to trap him. They didn't do it. 30 seconds to go in the first half. It's been all East Tennessee State against a very good College of Charleston team. Lawson through the double to Tyrus Wade. No shot clock. 18 on the game clock. And you're right, Nate. They're holding it for one. Worst thing to do right now is foul. Lawson turns the corner. There it is. There's the steal. Plenty of time, seven and a half seconds. Coach Harry used his 30 earlier in the game. You use it or you lose it. He's done with it. Plenty of time to get a good shot. And also into the lineup for College of Charleston is Troy Wheelis. He will inbound the ball, maybe get it right back for a three. What do you think? He's the three point shooter. He can hit it. Mobley can hit it. And Bernard Jackson will go crashing on the glass. 37 20. Last possession of the first sack. Harris to Mobley. Mobley slips, goes down. They ran Troy Willis off three screens to the weak side. Thomas Mobley setting the first screen as Troy ran by him. Mobley popped out, got the ball. Nice play. Ed DeChels barking at his team to make sure they block out Mobley at the line. Mobley with seven points here in the first half. And Thomas missed for the car. Last three free throws. The Cougars play well at the end of the half. Down by a bunch. They got to come back second half. A great half of basketball for East Tennessee State. They lead by 17 at home. They're 7-0 at home. Trying to beat a good college of Charleston team. We'll be back with more right after this. All the fans at Johnson City love what happened in the First half, they've got a huge lead. The Buccaneers 37, College of Charleston 20. Ready for second half action. College of Charleston with the first possession. 
And what a huge lift it would be to the college, Nate, if they get off to a good start this half. They got to play four four-minute games, each TV timeout. They got to go to the 16-minute mark and dig into the deficit. Off the pick and roll, there's Mobley, no good. And a big rebound by Zaki Wadu. Aggressive play, that's all you can hope for. They'll drop if they keep playing that hard. Tyrus Wade back to Tim Smith. Lamar Jackson starts this half. That's a big one. Smith tries to get it inside to Wadu. Tried to thread the needle. He had absolutely no shot at getting that there. We had the same angle. We're looking right down the barrel of the gun. There was a lot of guys in maroon shorts slapping at that one. They've been really good out of bounds under, though. Big scoring opportunity. 18 seconds on the shot clock. There's Wade, scored in the first half on the same play. Gets the little runner again. He just spins, gets the ball. The defender's mo momentum is going the wrong way, and he turns and goes back to the middle. A lot of teams just try to get the ball in bounds, but they try to score. <laughs> Out of bounds. That was Bernard Jackson taking it up strong. Thought he drew the foul, but Mike Wood says he's out of bounds. So far, two tip freeze, Tennessee. Kyle Jackson makes something happen here. 39 20. Carter picks up his dribble in a tough place. Loose ball, bodies all over the place. There's Wheelis. Mobley wasn't expecting it. And Ryan Lawson comes up with the ball. Now three on three, half court situation, another steal. That's Tony Mitchell and Ali comes up the, with it. Ali up to the biggest guy in the court and the smallest guy in the court steal. Got to finish. They're doing the right things, Cal Charles. Now they got to finish. There's Mitchell pump fake. Oh, what a move. Fakes block. one three, goes to the glass, big time block. Tyrus Wade comes up with it. He thought he had a lane to the best, but nobody there. Wade slapped it out. Gerald Fields with the ball and got the Buccaneers off to a great start. This Tim Smith, the hot shot freshman from Newport News, Virginia, played at Hargrave Military Academy. They tons of good players there. Absolutely. There's a foul off the ball. It's hot and heavy. Tony Mitchell thinks he's got to lay in the best. He spins, meets two guys. Look out. Wadu smacked it back out of great block by Zaki Wadu. We've got four blocks for East Tennessee, just one for the college. There is Tyrus Wade with a big time springer right there. East Tennessee's got four points in the half. Tyrus Wade's got them all. Nate, a, a troublesome stat for College of Charleston. They are 0 for 3 when down at half. Right now, they're down 21. Yeah, they're down a bunch. There's Harris with the three. Missed everything. And there's a foul away from the ball on Ryan Lawson. Well, Rudy Rothside made an aggressive play there to go get it, and he got fouled. If Rudy just watches that, East Tennessee gets the basketball because it didn't hit anything. He got it right back. Wheelis inbound to Rothside. To Mitchell. Mitchell with a nice handle. Off to Harris. Harris inside to Ross side. Back out to Tony Mitchell. There's the inside outside you were talking about, Nate. Back to Mitchell and he dribbles it out of bounds. Nope. Kyle's of Charleston will keep possession of it. The ball went into the post and Rudy did the right thing. Kicked it back out. The defense has to honor him when he goes inside to kick it back out. Mitchell got a wide open three. Mobley. To Wheelis, the three-point shot blocked by Fields. Fields now in transition, goes up for the one-hand dunk. Foul from behind by Wheelis. Troy, a lot of times the guy would mope when he gets a shot block. Troy Wheelis did not. Busted his hump back, stopped an easy two. Had a great shot. Fields just ran around Rudy's screen, and Troy could have moped and given up a dunk, but he didn't. Great hustle by the senior out of Bun, North Carolina. And a nice shot block by Fields. He's had 15 blocks on the year, make that 16. Now at the foul line, he is a 63% foul shooter. Really a nice player, averaging 10 points a game, five rebounds. In fact, Gerald Fields set a school record for blocks last year with 56, breaking the record by Greg Dennis, the guy you mentioned earlier. Greg Dennis, six foot eleven, a great player at this institution in years past. Blocked a lot of shots, Fields busted that record. He also made a lot of three-point shots for Les Robinson and Allen LaForce. Here's Wheelis. 
dribble drive. There it finds Ross side at the foul line for the little tiptoe jumper and it goes. How's Charles doing what they need to do now? They're penetrating, hitting the open man. They need to stop the intensity at this end and claw their way back in it. Tim Smith into the lane. Hey, let's go! In traffic, knocked out of bounds. It'll be the Cougars' possession. It might have been the first time all night that East Tennessee has forced a dribble drive to the basket. They forced a couple passes, but that time the young freshman Smith made an ill-advised attempt to score. He's also a guy since he's become a starter, averages 14 points, five assists, four rebounds, four steals. How about that for a freshman? Oh, man, for a guy who played high school last year. There's Wayless, off to Mobley. Mobley, one dribble, pulls up the box, blocked by Gerald Field. Another one. The big guy, has got some quick feet. He got up quickly and stuck that one. Tyrus Wade. Dribble drive into the lane. Jump stop off glass. No good. Rebounded by Rosside. Here's the pitch ahead to Zeke Johnson. Picks his dribble up. He'll shoot the three. Nobody on the weak side. Rudy Rosside's got to realize you know when your teammates going to shoot, go to the weak side and crash the board. East Tennessee by 19. Yeah. 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 Jones slant and set play. Tyrus Wade in trouble. Bad shot selection right there. He thinks he got hammered. There's, the, there's Mitchell with the three and he gets it. What a huge shot. In transition, they're dangerous, and here to come to College of Charleston. Coach Michellis has seen enough of that possession. What a nice timeout by Coach Michellis. It's just a 30-second timeout, and he knows how College of Charleston can score in bunches. And we're going to take a break. East Tennessee 41, College of 25. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Johnson City. There's some of the crazos, those Buccaneer fans, and they're loving the action tonight. College of Charleston, six block shots tonight. It's just one. Or East Tennessee with six shot blocks. Fields has two. Fields, as, as you just alluded to before, set the record. He might but set another one this year if he keeps it up. He's had some shin splint problems, and he's uh, not practiced every day. And for a big 270-pound man, that's tough. Now comes the TV timeout. East Tennessee, 41, College of Charleston, 25. The score is five for college at half, second half, four for East Tennessee. We'll be back. We're back at the Mini Dome in Johnson City, Tennessee, on the campus of East Tennessee. East Tennessee. And the freshman, Tim Smith, is one of the reasons why they're really good. He's done a nice job of controlling everything. Yes, he has. He made one ill advised play the whole night near the field. The missed three by Tim Smith, the freshman. Again, he played at Hargrave Military Academy, so he's played against good competition before. And he's, he's a freshman, but he's probably a year older than any other freshman because he played that extra year. That'll help him, obviously, when he's a senior. Almost like a fifth-year senior. There's the wide open three off the inbound for Tyrus Wade. No Ooh. good. Ooh, Mitchell got way up for that board. <laughs> Rudy Rothstein gets it inside and it's swatted the other direction. There's Carter off glass. Wow. That's big time action right there. Rudy Rothstein was quick, but he wasn't quick enough. Watch this block. Nice transition, Tony Mitchell. Up to Warding inside the Rudy. He's got an open basket. No, he doesn't. Zakid with the block. Smacked it back in his face and kept it in play. Big time play there. Tim Carter at the line. The, the freshman left it. He gets that one to go. And, and after the black, the block shot, Nate, it took Carter all of about four seconds <laughs> to get to the basket at the other end. It's 94 feet, four seconds. He's flying and he's dribbling the ball. <laughs> Wheelis inside the Ross side. Spin move off glass. No good. Gets his own. Jump ball that will be in possession of East Tennessee. Rudy, that time a much quicker play. Didn't get a block. Just didn't finish and make it. 
Mike Fenton in this half. Coach Harry might be a little upset with the fact that Michael wasn't real aggressive in this first half. I'm sure we'll see him later. Ben Rhoda, top of the key. East Tennessee really beats you up, making you go off screen after screen after screen. And eventually that wears you out on defense. Tim Smith with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Through his legs, does everything. Little run of one hander, no good. Well, he is quick. He shot that one from the hip. He's quick. You don't know when the shot's coming or where it's coming from. And Tom Harrion calls the timeout. 14.05 to go in the second half, and East Tennessee still, Nate, with an 18 point lead. Yeah, College Charles made a little run early in the first couple minutes of the half. East Tennessee counterpunched, basically. They took the punch and they just fought back, and they're doing the right things to keep this lead. College of Charleston, on the other hand, has gotten some pretty good shots this half, but they haven't finished. We've seen the block shots by East Tennessee. Well, when, you, when, when the ball gets swatted back, I think it's seven or eight blocks already, you're a little hesitant taking it up to the rim, and you know you might get it smacked back in your face, but you've got to be mentally tough, as that man is right there, Tom Harry. You've got to be tough, and you've got to just keep going. Maybe they'll call a foul. Maybe you'll have quick them and even score. Or you got to try to rip the rim down when you get up there. Well, and what a tough job he's got in Tom here. And he replaces John Crest. The Cougars have won at least 21 games the last nine years. He's got a tough job, and they ran the table in the Alaska shootout. Just came out of the out of the barn on fire at the start of this season. They're very aggressive. Their full court pressure very effective, and they made three. There is Tim Smith with a wide open three from the corner, and he buries it. 40% three-point shooter, that's pretty good, and he stuck that one. Mitchell posted up, turnaround jumper, no good. Tyrus Wade he goes. He goes. gets called for one. Now, if you're watching the College of Charleston and you're watching their offensive prowess or lack thereof to this point, You'll notice a lot of times they get the ball and dribble without doing anything with their feet. If you're going to dribble the basketball, you got to do one of two things. You got to do it to relieve pressure, or you got to do it to get closer to the basket. There's no point just dribbling and standing there. Wheelis tries to throw it inside to Benton. Benton now into the game. There's Rhoda. And he draws the foul. I don't know who Troy was trying to throw that one to, but it was intercepted. And as you said last time, We'll watch the play here. Quickly, he gets the ball down the floor, does young Mr. Swift up the road. There's a block from behind by Troy Willis. East Tennessee has some talented freshmen in the backcourt. Number four, Ben Rhoda, and number five, Tim Smith. They're going to be here for a long time. They're going to be very effective. Well, you mentioned it. They have a real nice mix of, of youth and upperclassmen. And obviously, Ed DeChellis knows what he's doing. They, they tied UNC Greensboro in the North for first place last year. They won the North outright in 2001, and again, the preseason pick to win the North this year. And the first seven or eight players, the only seniors, number three, Ryan Lawson. Mitchell now has four fouls for College of Charleston. There's the deep three for Wording, and he drills it. They need a punch on them. Might as well start with somebody. Joe has had a little lack of confidence the last couple games. He stuck that one. They need to do a lot more of that to get back in with down to 20. And Wording, really a nice player. He's very skilled. He can handle it. He can pass it. He can shoot it, too. Much bigger and stronger than he was last year. Rhoda with the drive. Turns the corner, forces up, gets knocked out of bounds. A lot of block shots tonight on both of them. No easy baskets. No. But the Jordan rules, no layups. Ben Rhoda inbounds. Finds Tim Smith, another three, same spot. This time no good, rebounded by Mobley. Just in basketball, Mobley gets a rebound. You gotta get rid of it, you can't cradle it. Mobley with the three. Mike Fenton in the perfect place to get a defensive board on the weak side. He just couldn't grab the handle. But, I oh know, I thought they were giving it to College of Charleston. East Tennessee for a full court press. That's the guy you don't want to handle it in a full court press because he'll break it by himself. He's left handed, but 
Handles it well with his left, with his right. Field goal percentage by half. Both halves, Collins and Charleston. Shooting in the 20. Numbers. Smart play, by, smart play by Zeke there. He could have dunked it, but he kept his composure. Let Smith run under him and just laid it up. They need points right now. They don't need dunks. They just need points. Any way they can get it. It's now an 18-point lead for the Buccaneers. Long way to go. Zeke Johnson got stuck on the screen there and knew he's behind the play and tried to slap it loose. If he would have slapped it up, no foul. He slapped it down. They called the foul. Collins of Charleston down 18 with just inside 12 minutes to go. East Tennessee on a roll at home. We'll be back with more right after this. East Tennessee State continues to lead big over the College of Charleston, 48 to 30, 12 minutes to go in this one. It's a doubleheader of Big Ten hoops on CSS this Wednesday at 7 Eastern. Freshman phenom Bracey Wright leads the Indiana Hoosiers against Northwestern. Then at 9, Iowa hosts Brian Cook and the Illini. That's all right here on CSS, your source for sports. The college basketball in the Southeast. Tyrus Wade off to Knuckles, the big fella. Here's Tim Smith, and boy, am I impressed with him, Nate. Well, they set a lot of screens in their offense. Again. They just wait until somebody decides not to go through a screen. That time, nobody got to what do, and he stuck it. He stuck it. He has 10 points now. Here's Benton inside. He needs to get on track. Loses the handle. Picks it back up, and he gets fouled. Michael has to learn. He got the ball. He spun in the middle. He had no idea where the defense was. Wording with a deep, that's an NBA three right there, nothing but the bottom. Need a lot more of those quickly to get back in it. Take Johnson to Wording. Back to Zeke, trying the inside, outside, steps through, off glass, no good. Benton on the follow, loses the handle, and then blocked again. Mike's got to rip the rim down there, he's, he's capable of doing that. And Tim Smith trying to get the ball to Tyrus Wade. We got turnovers all over the place. Never let the ball bounce, Michael. You got to catch it before it hits the ground. Zeke Johnson, three. East Tennessee is not going to slow it down. Here comes Tim Smith. A little run of one hander, no good. Here come the Coots. Wording. The three-point shot, that's two in a row. For Great confidence for Big Joe right there. They need to keep doing that for this game, and it's a long way to go the rest of the year. Joe Warding's got to be a factor if the Cougars are going to beat people with a three-point shot. And you got to appreciate the fact that when their best shooters aren't getting them to fall, he's just stepping in there and drilling. And they're all capable. Knuckles with his foot on the line. No good rebounded by Mobile. He averages four a game. Wording again. Got to follow that one, Joe. You know you missed it as soon as you, nobody in basketball knows whether you missed it more than the guy who shot it. Follow it up and crash the boards. And with all that action, East Tennessee still leads by 17. Just inside 10 minutes to go. Cougars need to push a, pitch a little shutout here for about the next five minutes and get some points. Tyrus Wade misses the shot, gets it back. Call timeout, and calls timeout. It's a nice hustle play. And we'll keep it here. You see Mike Ben right there averages 10 points a game. Goose egg tonight. One, because Gerald Fields is playing good defense. Two, because it was that Zakid Wadu smacked the back in his face a couple times. Those two factors have caused Michael to not be as aggressive in his play around the basket. He's only a junior, but you got to grow up quick, son, in this league. You've got to keep ripping the rim down every time and show your force as opposed to their force, and then you'll get the ball in the bucket. And now Benton will go to the bench. And in fact, we've talked about Benton a lot. 27 blocks on the season coming into it. And Bernard Jackson is back in for Michael. Bernard Jackson will show Michael how to be aggressive. Oh! 
Tim Smith against Mitchell. Here's Ryan Lawson. Rhoda finds Smith on the right side. 15 on the shot clock. Ford has set a ton of screens. I'll tell you, Bernard Jackson, every time he comes in, something positive happens. Turnover by down. Lawson. Here comes Wording, Boom. another three. And he's feeling it. I'll tell you what, if you're number 51, Knuckles, you're guarding You better find him in transition because he's going to burn you. And what Joe needs you to do now, if Knuckles gets in his face, pump and go right by him because he's quicker than Knuckles is. Now a 14-point lead. Long way to go. Smith inside the field. Fields horses his way up. No good. Gets his own rebound back. And he'll go to the line. Well, it was fortunate for Gerald. The ball rolled around the rim and came right back. There was a lot of maroon shirts up there for the board. Rolled good. Ball did a 360 on the rim. Came right back to him. Going to go to the line. Try to earn it. Watch. We'll see the play right here. There's the shot. Going to roll around the rim and go right back to Gerald. He goes up and a lot of shirts ripped him. He brought it down low and he got fouled. He's a big fella, 6'7", 270, and throws it around, too. Hits the threes, can post up, has nice touch from the line. That's a lethal combination if you're the opponent. One. Well, he helped East Tennessee State get off to the great start in this game, and he's been a load at both ends. Not only scoring, but also shot block. Yeah, Joel Field's a very good player. As we said earlier, he's had some trouble with shin splints. Shin splints are tough to heal when you're 270, because every time you run, that's a lot of pounding on those, on those legs. Is that why I'm starting to get shin splints? Absolutely. 52-36. <laughs> Absolutely. Willis to Wording inside to Bernard Jackson. He forces one up. Bernard Jackson trying to set up Joe Wording. Joe Wording gets the ball off the screen. Puts it up there, fakes the shot, and throws it inside to the big guy. Joe Wording, 12 points, one board, four for six from three-point land. That's a young man, Joe Wording. I'm looking up his stats as we speak. He only shoots 36% from three-point land. He only averages four and a half points a game. Big night for Joe. Well, as I mentioned, uh, one of the most skilled guys for the College of Charleston. And, and if you give the guys a skill test, pass the ball, shoot the ball, ball handling, instead of all the, the dipsy do stuff, he's as good as anybody in the Southern Conference. Really a skilled player. Absolutely, only a junior and really worked in a weight room you can see in the summer. He was good last year. He's much bigger, much stronger this year. That pays off for him. And Bernard Jackson gets it done at the foul line. 52-37. College of Charleston trying to, little by little, Nate, not all at once, little by little, get back into this thing. Just claw your way back into it. They'll take a win at the buzzer right here. They just got to claw their way back into it to have the opportunity to be close at the end. Tim Smith with the ball, 14 seconds on the shot clock. Kick and roll up top. Charleston tries to double it. He splits it and buries it. That's a sweet play right there. Tom Charlton double teams all ball screens. Big man was there. He just split him and went right through the middle. Great offensive play. Easy in there. Bernard Jackson, little pull-up jumper from about 14 feet. Bernard Jackson gets healthy as he does every game. Surgery's over. Now we just got to rehab and recuperate. He's going to be a big factor for the Cougars the rest of this Southern Conference season. And Charleston doesn't need to trade baskets right now. They, they need to stop if they're going to make a dent in this thing. Uh, loose boy got dive after that one. Tim Smith with the ball. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Ball is the fifth play. There's the screen. Turns the corner. Pitches it to a wide open Ben Rhoda for the three. Cougars played great defense that time. They didn't let number five Tim Smith hurt them. Kicked it out the road and missed the shot. Got the rebound, got fouled. East Tennessee State leads 54 39. We've got 7 19 to go. We're about a crunch time. We'll be back. We are back, and Mike Wood, William Hume, and Frank Carmichael are the officials, but they've got a couple guys that want to step in over there. Those two guys are ready to jump on the court. They got the striped shirts on, they just need the whistles. Looking at the stats, both teams shooting 29% in the second half. 
if somebody makes a little run, East Tennessee hits some shots, they're going to jump ahead. College of Charleston hits some shots, we're going to have a ball game here. Well, and you see two teams just absolutely getting after each other. We've had tons of block shots, no gimmies tonight. Great effort on both ends of the floor. One team just making them more than the other. There's Bernard Jackson. He's feeling it. The kid can play. It's a shame. I keep saying it like a broken record. He's been hurt. He's not hurt anymore. He's going to be a great player for this basketball team. Well, he's yelling at his teammates. Doesn't play since Look at him. He's fired up. You got to love that heart. The lead for East Tennessee is now 13. It's a big possession. This can get a near single digits here if they stop it. Ryan Lawson, top of the key. Finds Tim Smith wide open, three point shot, no good, rebounded by Guess Who. Well, Fields just went, didn't win any part of Bernard Jackson that time. He got away from him, but Bernard went up for the board. Charles Charleston trying to make a dent. Here's Zeke Johnson. Nice play. It's now an 11 point lead for the Buccaneers. Folks, if you're going to go get some needs, you better do it quick because this is going to get good down the stretch. I just said going to the break, we're approaching crunch time, and here we are, 11 point game. Six minutes to go. East Tennessee continues to run clock in half-court situations, really making College of Charleston work hard defensively. It's amazing how your concentration improves when you score at the offensive end. Lawson to Fields. Pumping. Finger roll bucket. They double-teamed him from underneath. Nobody double-teamed him from the top side. They would have stolen the ball. That's now 11 points for Fields. There's Wheelis, gets the double to Mobley. Three-point shot, in and out. There's the rebound and the shot. Stanley Jackson will go to the line. Cougars are in his perfect situation to score without the clock running, and you got to crash the boards to do that. Stanley Jackson did it. Now he's got to make him at the free throw line. Watch this play inside. Great pass inside. To Zeke, he snakes his way through, underneath, jumps up, turns, twists, layup. Just like you used to do it. East Tennessee with a killer bucket right here in the field. Watch the double team coming from underneath. Gerald reads the defense, spins to the middle, easy bucket. Nobody came from the top side. Postman got the ball, took his time, found the defense that made the move. A very smart thing to do when you're a post player. Well, and Ed DeCellis' team continues to get the ball where they want it. And that's inside. And you talked about inside, outside for College of Charleston, Nate. That's exactly what East Tennessee State has done. Today. Yeah, they're doing it, and they're doing it very effectively. Stanley Jackson with the shot, and it goes. Split a pair. they got to make every opportunity from the free throw line to get back in it. 12-point lead for the Buccaneers. Still playing in their comfort zone, Nate, or are they starting to tighten up a little bit? They look like they're getting a little less aggressive offensively. They're settling for the jump shot. Last time they went in the field, that was the best possession in a while. Cougars forcing them away from the basket to run their offense. That's great defense. There's Tyrus Wade in trouble. in trouble. Calls timeout. They will keep possession of the ball. They'll have 14 seconds on the shot clock. Well, he could have done two things Monday. He could have pounded and thrown it away. Nobody from the bench yelled timeout. Coach Tichelis let the kids make their own decision. He made it. There's Coach Tichelis. Little smile on his face. He's telling him, Tyrus, you made the smart play there. You called the tee out. Now we'll set something up. 14 seconds a long time. What the Cougars have a chance to do now is bust their hump for 14 seconds, make a stop, and get this thing maybe to 10 or 9 points. Well, College of Charleston has cut it to 12, but they got it to 11 one time, and, and the Cougars on a 7 2 run the last three minutes. College of Charleston, stick with the man to man. Watch how far out the offense has to be run. He picks up his dribble, and everybody denies the ball. Tyrus Wade's got nothing to do but turn to the rear free and say, timeout, please. There are 14 seconds on the shot clock. Quick inbound for East Tennessee. Set Not play. much time for Tim Smith, but just a little shake and bake right now. He's got fields. There's Zeke Wadud on the dribble penetration. Oh, big play there. Three seconds inside by East Tennessee. There was two seconds left on the shot clock. We're about to see the big time. Springer from the corner yes. by Gerald Fields. Can he do that? He can hit him. Shooting 37 something out there. It's not bad. Big possession offensively for the guys in Maroon. Down 12. College of Charleston. There's the drive. 
There's the pass to Mobley in the corner. Goes to the basket, loses possession of it. The Kiwa dude comes up with it. We thought he was going to beat him off the dribble, and he didn't, and he strips him from it. Thomas got to make better decisions than that a lot of time on the shot clock there. All right, got to play D again. Four and a half minutes to go. They got him. Smith hung up with the ball, calls another timeout. Second time in a row it has happened, but the Cougars stopped him after the timeout. They have not turned it into points yet. They've had unbelievable opportunities here. They got to convert. East Tennessee is definitely tightening up right now. It's a 12 point lead for East Tennessee State and Nate Ross, they've been able to play in their comfort zone the entire game, really. Well, this is the first time they haven't had an opportunity to just relax. There you can see the score. Timeouts left. College of Charleston has a bunch. East Tennessee doesn't have any timeouts left. That's a big point for the College of Charleston. And you got to love the effort that the Cougars have made in the second half. They never quit. They've continued to fight. They came out in the beginning of the second half, played decent, then had a little law and have just fought the whole second half. Once again, man-to-man -man defense. Smith picks his dribble up and has nobody to throw to, has to call another timeout. Now you see Coach Chelsea in the corner of your screen calling the timeout. He doesn't like it, but his team didn't turn it over. Tune in to CSS every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for Talking Hoops with Wimp and Sonny. Host Matt Stewart joins former SEC basketball coaches Wimp Sanderson and Sonny Smith to discuss all the latest basketball news. This live call-in show can be seen only on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Those two gentlemen Those can tell you a few stories. Holy Christmas. Now, does Wimp have to wear the plaid jacket <laughs> on this thing? I've it, seen it before. I don't think, I think he's left the, the plaid I sports think he coat at all. Back in Alabama, but him and Sonny Smith, Sonny Smith, the next East Tennessee State coach, had great teams here, along with Mac McCarthy as, it is, as his assistant, and then I believe went to Auburn. Those guys will tell you some tales. I saw Sonny Smith at a basketball clinic one time. He was supposed to talk about a 1-3-1 zone. All he did was tell jokes. There's the inbounds. Barely Tim Smith with the ball. Almost a great steal there by Stanley Jackson. Tim Play Smith now comfortably with the ball. They avoided one there. Play great deal. Last two possessions. Got to do it again if they're going to get back in it. Six seconds on the shot clock. That's Lawson. Inside to a dude, and he gets it. Big bucket by Zakeed right there. Tough shot. Fade away in the lane. Not a dagger, but a big time blow against the Cougs. Pushes the lead back to 14. There's Wheelis. To they don't, Johnson. They don't need threes, they need buckets. Ross side inside. And it goes. That's Stanley Jackson with the turnaround jump. Most of the freshman or the senior, Ryan Lawson that time and scored. Trading baskets okay. Got to have a stop here down 12. Again, 12-point lead for East Tennessee. That's Ryan Lawson, the senior, turns the corner, picks his dribble up inside the field. He wheels back out to Lawson. No good for the three-point attempt. Big rebound by Zeke Johnson. They get him in transition. It's a plus. There it is. There's Wheelis. Boom. And he drills it. Big time shot by Troy Willis. They needed it. Folks, we got a nine-point game. That's exactly right. And, and Tom Herrian calls a 30-second timeout and takes the chance right here. Guys, here we are, 3.09 to go. We're only down nine, and we're doing fine. They got in transition over to Mobley. They double-teamed Zeke, threw it over to Troy Willis, and he stuck the three to cut it to nine. They have played 37 minutes of OK basketball, and they can steal this one with three minutes of great effort right here. And again, East Tennessee State undefeated at home this year, and they have played some very good competition. In fact, they lost these games, Nate, but at South Carolina lost by just five. At Virginia, East Tennessee lost by eight. And also uh, at Vandy, lost a good game and ended up 11. This is a good team. Vanderbilt just beat Alabama the other night, so Vanderbilt, a very good basketball team. They lost to Auburn by three and then beat Alabama. Here's the inbound to Zeke Wadud. He's had a great half. He's doing all he could do to keep East Tennessee in at this half. Got to have a stop right here, guys. Got this to the first it. time since the score was 15 to 6 in the first half since it's been under 10 points. So East Tennessee might get a little tight with a stop here in the Cougar score. There's Tyrus Wade on that little curl cut. Double pump. 
in traffic gets hammered. You know, the last two times East Tennessee has scored and there got fouled. Very aggressive moves in the lane. This time by Tyrus, he goes inside, just takes it right to the rim, beats Zeke Johnson, goes up against three guys and gets hammered. Time before that, what dude made a great bucket in the lane. They can't let dribble penetration beat him, and that's what beat him the last two times. Wade makes the first, he's a 78% foul shooter. You and I talked before the game. He's the young man who got a shot blocked by Mike Benton in the Southern Conference Tournament last year with 0.8 seconds to go. Colin Charleston wins that one. Tyrus Ray wanted a little payback. Wade makes both. He now has 12 points. And we've got us a ball game. It is 11 points right now. The lead for the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. And 2.45 to go. Tom Herring with a timeout. Let's see what he decides when we come back. to go in this one. East Tennessee State leads by 11. College of Charleston has outscored the Buccaneers 29 to 23 here in the second half, Nate. And the Cougars have two timeouts left. East Tennessee has none left. There's no more media timeouts. So the Cougars can stop it twice. And I would think if they score, not this time, but maybe the next time they will. East Tennessee had to burn two timeouts in their half-court offense when they couldn't get on track. We'll see if it comes back to Hanna. There's Mobley. Takes it up strong. How about that? That's the best way to score points right now. If you get the bucket and the free throw, that's perfect. This is not perfect, but it's as close as you're going to get. An aggressive move to the basket. He got over the rim, but they smacked him. A little curl. Wordy gets out of the way. Good move. Wadu tries to block it. Wadu fouls him. Gerald Fields got the, Gerald Fields got the rebound, but Wadu smacked him. Mobley has seven points on the night. That's the third foul on Wadu. Make and right now, every possession is an important one. The foul is good, but you got to finish and make the foul shot. That's you know, amazing. I mean, as aggressive as this game has been, nobody's in foul trouble though. Really. Ryan Lawson has three. That's it. Second shot from That's Mobley is in. Ten point game. Got it. There's Mitchell with the steal. Now you need the timeout on the score just to get your troops fired up. A three be great. There's Wheeler nice inside to Mobley. Here comes the shot. Boy, you just see him gather, you know something special is about to happen. Well, when they when East Tennessee fouls the College of Charleston, it does a couple of great things. Here's the play inside. Great pass. They double teamed outside for Troy to stop the three, and there goes Mobley. It does two things. It gives the college a chance to score with the clock not running, and it saves time Harry in calling the timeout. He doesn't have to call one. Mobley back at the line. First one goes. Coach Herring can do two things here. He's not, he's not choosing to put a sub in, stop the clock, make sure you set up your press. Mobley's got to make the free throw. They're going to press anyway. Down to nine. Now it is an eight-point game. 2.21 to go. Mobley now with 10 points. Here's the full court pressure. There's the double team. And Tyrus Wade, what a luxury to have a big guy like that that can handle the ball, Nate. Absolutely. And there's the miss, Ben Rhoda. In traffic, tough shot. Here comes Mitchell in transition. Rhoda got up in the air, tried to find Fields. Fields was covered, he put up the shot. Patience, guys. You need patience right here for a good shot, Eric. Nice fake. Wording pump fake. There's Keith Johnson inside the Mobley. Off glass, easy bucket. Excellent offensive possession. Everybody in the building showed they thought they were going to shoot a three. They worked the ball around. They faked two threes. Threw it inside for a layup. One timeout left for the college. Six point game. And we got a buck 52 to go in this one. And six point game, it's taken it all game long for them to scratch and claw and get back in it. But the college is right there. Watch this offensive play. Pass outside, fake the three. Go by him. Pass, great pass inside. Smart play by Smith right there. Not the foul, Mobley. Gave him the layup because he had a three-point play if he did. Now, the last two buckets, last two points for East Tennessee have come from Wadud and have come from um, Tyrus. By penetration into the lane, 10 to 2 in the last two minutes. Kyle Schultz got to realize that Wadud and Wade are going to be the guys to score. Fields hasn't been a factor lately. Six-point game, East Tennessee having trouble getting it in. Here's Tyrus Wade against the pressure. Pitches it ahead to Wadud. East Tennessee could not get the ball to Tim Smith, a little playmaker. 
And rough getting it to half court, Nate. Well, that's what you want to do when you press, keep it out of the best ball handler's hands. And I'm looking across the court, and Coach DeCellis is grabbing Smith, saying, son, go get the basketball. You are our press breaker. Big free throw, 67% for Zakid Wadu for the year. The foul on Zeke Johnson, his fourth foul. The dude's first shot, no good. But the rebound by Ben Rhoda, how huge is that? That's a killer if you're the college of Charleston. Great job by the freshman. And a new shot clock, one minute and 30 seconds to go in this one. East Tennessee right now trying to run some clock. Good move, you don't have to foul, you just gotta play good game. There's Wadu, turnaround jumper in traffic, no good. Big rebound by Zeke Johnson. Wheelis with the drive to Mobley. Here's Wording, he's been filling it up from out there. But good defense by the Buccaneers. There's Zeke on the drive, tries to hammer, and Zeke Wadu with an unbelievable block. I tell you what, Zeke Johnson thought he had a clear lane to the basket. Zeke went way up there and almost caught the shot. He did have a clear way to the basket and would do with the big time block. He did, he gloved that one, he got all of it. Unbelievable athleticism on both ends of the floor. 18 on the shot clock, we're inside one minute. It's a six point game. And there's the steal by Tyrus Wade. And a foul by Willis. The Cougars looked a little hesitant, nobody wanted to take, that's when you have to move. Watch this block. He's got a wide open lane to the basket. Watch what I do. Left hand block against a right hand shooter. He blocked perfect execution. He sure did. And that's the fifth block for Zakiwa Du tonight. In fact, East Tennessee, 10 blocks on the night, Nate. College of Charleston with two. There's a team that averages four and a half for the year. This foul shot by Tyrus Wade. College of Charleston still has a chance. 40 seconds to go, six point game. There's the drive by Mobley, and gets fouled. That's what they need to do, surround the perimeter if the three's open, take it. If not, attack the basket. That's exactly what they did. Five blocks for Zakiwa, dude, and every one of them, more, the, the latest one more spectacular than the last one. Big free throws right here. Mobley at the line. That's 12 points tonight. First shot is good. Five-point game. This is when you and I earned our money as an assistant coach. This is when you got to grab the head coach, say, Coach, this is who we need to foul, and translate that to the guys on the floor. And then pray like crazy that the guy misses his Pray you picked the right one. Exactly <laughs> right. All right, now he did what I talked about last time. Substitute sets up the press. Steal in the backcourt, in the front court, you foul. 35 seconds to go. It's a four-point game. Switch on all screens. That's exactly what they did. Now they're stuck. Tyrus Wade to field. Back to Tyrus, and he will go to the line. Tyrus. 82% free throw shooter. You're almost in a situation in the game where you got to foul whoever's got it. This is where Coach Dean Smith, North Carolina, was unbelievably smart. He crashed the offensive glass on a shot and committed a foul. Clock doesn't run, the ball goes in, the basket still counts, and you get what you want, a big guy shooting at the other end. He won a few games over there. Just a couple. Carolina. Boy, Tyrus oh, put that one up. Tyrus put that up and walked away before it was halfway to the basket. He knew he made it. Tyrus Wade now has 13 points on the evening. He's a 78% foul shooter coming into tonight. Second one is all net. Oh, money, both of them. 62 56, 30 seconds to go in this one. The crowd here at the mini dumps loving it. Wording to Mitchell. Three point shot. Good. Drills it. How about oh. that? That was a smart play. You got a big guy, Joe Wording, on the wing. Big enough to see over the defense, through the cross-court pass, the defense ran out to him, hit Mitchell, boom, three-pointer. 23.7 seconds to go. Watch this possession. Joe Ward, he kicks it to Mitchell, wide open. Money, three-point game. Gotta make free throws for East Tennessee, or this one's gonna get interesting. 
Well, it is interesting. It's taken all game long, but here's the college at Charleston, and there's the general, Tom Harry. Take a look at the three-point shots, Nate. Nine made three-pointers. Doesn't, doesn't matter how many they take. Right now, they just got to make them. East Tennessee, a good three-point shooting team. East Tennessee shoots 34%. Cougars shoot 38% for the year. But East Tennessee is not going to get a three, and they don't want to shoot a three right now. They want to eat the clock. College of Charleston is going to foul them. 23.7 seconds to go. We got us a big time game. Hockey fans, tune in to CSS next Tuesday's Coast Hockey League All Star Game. This event showcases all the best talent in the ECHL and can be seen at 7 30 p.m. Eastern right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. And Nate, it was the Greenville Growl that won the Kelly Cup last year in the ECHL. You knew that though, didn't you? Of course I did, since you just told me. You know, Coach Harry's got to love his effort from his guys in the second half, and he's gonna love that bus ride home if they can get a turnover and a three right here to tie it. We'll go over time, I'm ready. I'm ready. 23 ticks to go in this one, just a three-point game. Full court pressure by the College of Charleston. Fields has been their outlet guy the last three times, Nate. He turned his angle right here. If he comes out, they can put anybody from the bench to shoot it. He's a tough kid. He wants to make these free throws. He wants to take these free throws. Well, he's had a nice game at both ends of the floor. He's got 11 points on the night. Three for five from the line. And he is a 60% free throw shooter. Watch, he rolls it over a little bit right there. It looked like uh, Quentin Hollis, as he fouled him and fell down, kind of rolled into the ankle. Guys behind me yelling, rolling block. Wrong game, fellas. This is basketball. Big free throws. Remember last time East Tennessee missed? Lawson got the rebound. Got the seal out right here. 22 seconds to go on this one. Gerald Field, 63% from the line this year. Big oh, shot. Man. Sorry, it's not over yet. Cougars mass substitutions. Everybody on the floor in the Maroon Shirt can hit a three right now. They're all capable. They've all done it. Four-point lead for the Buccaneers. I'd watch the guy to field his guard because he's not get as back down the floor as quickly as he normally would. He makes both. How huge is that, Nate? Two big free throws by the big man from East Tennessee State. Five-point lead. Push it up the floor, Tony. Here's Mitchell. Gets Tim Smith, pulls up, three-point bomb, misses, rebound, the freshman Tim Smith, and he gets fouled. You know, a lot of times you want to see him, Tony wanted to obviously make the shot, but it's tough when you come up the floor, no screens, no nothing, and the guy's in your face the whole time. He's young, he'll learn from his mistakes, only a sophomore, but he wanted to make the great play, and Coach Harry and over there explaining exactly what I just mentioned to him right there. College of Charleston has invested so much emotion in coming back. But they've got enough left, just 12 ticks to go. East Tennessee State needs to miss and maybe do something foolish, and College of Charleston needs to score every time they get it. They well, you and I, that's Troy Willis' fifth foul to match number one in Jersey, it's Jersey, so he's got to sit. You and I spoke how, during a break, so many times we've seen games where you use all your energy to catch up. And you don't have enough energy to win it at the end. There's Smith with the miss. Still plenty of three-point shooters on the floor for the College of Charleston. Second shot, 12 seconds to go in this one. Smith makes that, pushes it to a six-point lead. 12 seconds to go. Here's Mitchell, pulls up. Mobley with the three. Rebounded by Smith. And he's out of bounds. Kyle's a Charleston ball, 3.3 seconds. Got to shoot it exceptionally quickly. Foul instantly. It's the only shot they got. Coach Harry, you can see him right there disappointed with the result, not with the effort. Mobley with the three at the buzzer. No good, but to get the tip in, it counts. 
Final score, East Tennessee State 65 in the college. 61. This is a big time game, Nate. Lots of fun in this one. And College of Charleston did everything they could do to get back in it. We'll talk about that when we come back right after this at the Mini Dome here at East Tennessee State.